Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had the paletero, man, smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and have them smash it right now. This episode right here was requested by none other than that retired CEO. Shout out to that retired CEO. He's always come through. Now, let me give a shout out to the following patrons. New Boot, I'm a cabron, Chris, Miguel, Juliet Alpha Whiskey, G, AI Vega, Art, Lawrence, Javier, Carlos, Fio, Janice, Ruben, Juan, Audit 460, Crescent, Carlos, Alberto, Pew Professional, Shanti, and El Bone. So if you haven't already signed up for that Patreon, make sure you sign up in the link below. This episode right here, man. I don't even know how I didn't think about this one, right? Boy, was over here talking about gangs, corrupt administration, right? I, I didn't just say, I didn't say corrupt gangs. Oh, man, wow. Here we go. Gangs and administration. Anyhow, this episode is called How to Survive Prison, right? From a correction, former correctional lieutenant's perspective having worked in California Department of Corrections for 16 years. If you guys have not seen the movie Shot Caller yet, it's a pretty good movie, right? That movie starts off with like a regular person who is drinking, having a few beers at the bar, gets in the vehicle and crashes, and I think some people die, therefore the dude ends up in prison, right? Average normal guy ends up in prison, right? Isn't really about that life, ain't never been about that life, right? Even if you are about that life, you can still get got, right? If you do not know how to conduct yourself in prison. There you are, facing the judge. You're getting sentenced to 15 years. 15 years is a long time, man. I say 15 because COs would sit around and say, hey, man, how much time do you think you can do? Right? Everybody wants to know what Green, what goes through Green's head. People would be like, man, I think I could do, I think I do, <laughs> I think I could do four years. Right? I think I had said like five years. Now, even that is pushing it. Oh, I wouldn't even like to be doing those five years. Right? But some people would like kind of, uh, Kind of like, uh, it never went past, like, ain't nobody trying to do past 10 years, right? <laughs> right? At all. At all. Right? Then we would ask some similar questions, like, hey, would you shack up with, you know, get yourself a boyfriend right away? And everybody's like, oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> oh, man, an asco. Oh, hell yeah, man. The homie will be, like, massaging my feet, right? Cooking me sopas, washing my clothes. But here we go. You guys just got hit with by the judge for 15 damn years of your life. You are going to be in the prison system. Man, heart sinks, right? Loved ones crying. Wow, here we go. You are going to go to county jail first, right? You're going to go to a county jail until you get sentenced and until you get on a bus. Then you will be going to a reception prison. Right, an institution that is dedicated to classify you, to figure out your point system, to look up your crime, to see what's your best fit, right? What level yard you're going to be on. There's four levels, one, two, three, and four in California. Let's just say you're a Hispanic, right? A Mexican, because this is going to be, it's easier for me to just say it this way. Right. Never been in a gang. Well, check this out, man. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. You will, you 100% will align yourself with the Southern Hispanics. Okay. First and foremost, right off the bat, you don't have a choice. You do not have a say in the matter. Right. So, if your whole life, right, you were the meanest guy on the wrestling team, you were, man, some type of combat veteran, 
Let's just say you were a somebody on the streets or you thought you were a somebody. When you go into the prison system, there is a machine bigger than you, right? On both sides, on green side and blue side, right? Nobody can break that machine, right? Somebody had mentioned that earlier on one of the interviews. Kind of like the United States military, how it used to be, right? You join the military to conform to the military. The military doesn't conform to you. Now we're in 2023. You can do whatever you want, apparently. Wow. Glad I'm out. You guys get the idea. You will fall in line. You're absolutely going to fall in line, right? Because it can be detrimental to your health. It can be detrimental to your health. So, You're going to get issued whatever it is you're going to get issued, right? Your little brown cup, state cup, it's thick. You do not want to get hit over the head with that. It will bust your ass open, right? Yeah, a little toothbrush, some tooth powder. They're going to sell you up with an inmate. Your your, your cellmate can be a murderer, a mass murderer, a serial killer. Your cellmate can be a... Depending on where you land on what, and uh, right, this is not not too complicated situation. So you don't got no funny business. There's no reason for you to be on an S and Y yard, right? You are going GP, okay? You can choose to go S and Y. That's your decision. But if you think you're gonna escape prison, you're not. And things are weird over there, okay? Weird. Now you hit the big house, right? Let me see. Sentinella State Prison. You go down south, right? Again, I can only speak from my perspective, but I can guarantee you all prisons are the same. From a lieutenant's perspective, right? Going back to officer and sergeant. You do not want to cop an attitude. Straight up. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. You do not want to cop an attitude. Well, what does that mean? I mean, rolling your eyes like this. Making noises like this. Uh, You do not want to do that. Because you're going to run into some problems. You're going to run into some problems. And let me tell you guys something. It's not that the green or the guards stink. Okay, we know. We know we're not invincible. We know that if we do not stay in certain lines, we can get got. Right, we know this, but at the same time, there's a prison to run effectively. Right, if <laughs> I don't understand how I got this concept down, but administration and Sacramento headquarters can't figure this shit out for the life of them. Right, it's because they're worried about personal gain. So, anyways, which brings back to another point: the wardens of the prisons are not running the institution, mind you. Let me be the one to break the bad news for them. They're too busy hooking up with their secretaries and record technicians. Right. Office techs. You, the troops on the line, you got officers, sergeants, and lieutenants, right? The captains are hiding under the desk and above on, right? Just making life miserable for the rest. The ones that are running the show are the officers, sergeants, and lieutenants. There's rules that you probably you're not going to be used to. Wearing your blue uniform tucked in, right? You got your yard walking in one direction around the yard, right? Don't be walking the opposite direction. Number one, you're going to, it's going to look abnormal. Number two, you're going to probably spook your fellow inmates, right? Because everybody is used to program. Everybody is used to routine, okay? When you hear an alarm, whether the alarm is sounding from a building or the yard, you will take a seated position. Right? Unless you're at Donovan, then you can stand up, walk around, drink some water, slap some cops around. And that's the truth. It's the unfortunate truth. But administration fostered that environment. 100% truth. I swear that's the truth. So, if you find yourself at High Desert State Prison and your ass isn't taking a seat, you may get shot. Right? That's the severity of things. Right? Shout out to the real ones. The real prisons, that is. So. You 
you will be asked to a uh, you and I'm gonna I have to I have to keep it real with you guys on this one. Right? It's about surviving. And and you haven't been to prison yet. That's why you're watching this episode. You will be asked to do something you don't want to do multiple times over, right? One thing can be like, hey, see this weapon right here? I need you to hold on to it. The matter of fact, stick it up your ass, right? That's called hooping. Hoop that. This one right here, I need you to hold on to that for me too, right? And that could be for numerous things. They can be testing your loyalty. They really don't want to get caught with it, so they're having you hold on to it, right? So that you will have some choices to make. I'm not your choice maker. I'm just here to tell you the truth. It can even go worse than that. It can say, hey, take this weapon right here. Yeah, I know. These are some bullshit-ass weapons, Donovan. I'm telling you guys. Um, And go stab that dude over there. It's in your best interest, if you want to survive, to not be asking questions. Now, I'm just keeping it real with you from a lieutenant. Now, it's crazy how you, you're wondering how do I know what goes on on Blue because I knew my job. Right, I knew my job. I, we were watching this every day. We we're having conversations every day. Now, if you opt to carry out that mission, so to say, you and another individual are going to go and start stabbing the you-know-what out of another individual. Whether you have that in your heart or not, it's up to you, right? You can possibly get shot with the Mini-14. That is a lethal round. It will kill you. You will definitely get pepper sprayed, right? And or thrown some type of grenade that, that goes poof, which is dried pepper spray, powdered. Uh, you may get hit with a baton, right? You may get yanked off of an individual and your arm or shoulder dislocated in the process. These are all realities, man. That individual that you were stabbing could possibly get the upper hand, take that weapon from you, and just start stabbing the dog shit out of you like we just seen in that video I posted not too long ago. That's All these are realities, man. It's the truth. It's the 100% truth. Like, oh, Hector, this sounds like a horrible place to be. Yes, it is prison, right? It's not. This isn't even us. This isn't even the guards imposing their will yet or their some. There's some guards that got picked on their whole damn life and they finally think they're a somebody. You'll hear me say that a lot, thinking they're a somebody. Thinking you're a somebody can get you in trouble, right? <laughs> More ways than once. But by all means, you will follow the machine, right? You will follow suit because as partners, as green, deep. If that partner is not out of pocket, we have to follow suit. Even if he kind of is out of pocket, right? Like I said, like I talked about a female crazy staff member one time that was yelling at these Southerners, damn near got me stomped out in the chow hall. I would have had to fight for my life, right? And, and that's technically following suit because I'm trying to survive. And now I'm, I don't know how much damage I can inflict on a hundred people, Right, probably minimal to zero, but <laughs> I might get one good one in right, <laughs> right before I cover my head. I might get one good one in right. <laughs> so, so here you are hating life, right? You're gonna go to your cell. Your the cells are so tiny, man. They're so tiny. You can go like this. You can touch them. There is a there is a toilet in there. A lot of the inmates would tell me it's like living in a bathroom. Hey, hey, you try living in a bathroom, they would say. It, it, accurate, accurate statement. It's like living in a bathroom with another man. I wouldn't even like living in a bathroom by myself, right? But this is what it's like. They got to poop. They got to eat in the same... <sighs> One time I was in basic training, right, the army, and one of these soldiers farted, right, and the drill sergeant came up to him and told me, how do you feel, man, that that guy just shit his pants and the little fart particles are flying up your nostrils right now? Just kind of thought of that right now. 
as you can see, there's so much to this, right? Chow. Uh, then I don't give a shit if it's 120 degrees outside. You, you will be having mandatory yard. Well, Hector, what is mandatory yard? I got this little this little book. It says rules, regulation, title 15. It doesn't say nothing about mandatory yard. I think I'm going to kick it in the patch today. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but your own people will force you to go out to yard, right? The reason behind that is strength in numbers. And I'm not saying anything that isn't already knowledge, like well known, right? If everybody is out to yard and something cracks off, the odds are better in your favor that everybody's out there, right? Simple. So I don't care if you're hot, you're sick, you're tired, you're hungry. Nobody's bigger than the machine. Now you're going to go to the chow hall, right? You're not feeling it. You're homesick, right? Your girl is hooking up with the neighbor. This is a sad truth, man. This is something you have to come to terms with. The brand new officer at the door of the chow hall looks at you and says, let me see your ID. Tuck in your shirt. You look at him like, man, I've been doing hard time. You don't know me. You don't know me. I got a week and a half in this pen. <laughs> right? <laughs> so you make some kind of scoff or pfft, or you walk in with your hat in the chow hall. Right? I already told you guys, man, it's not necessarily to follow the rules on green side. What's going through our head is, hey, you're not going to front us off. We're not going to be look like a bitch. We're not going to look like a bitch. It ain't going to happen. You're not going to make us look at a, like a bitch because we are following under the same environment, right? Ain't nobody like a bitch in prison. Ain't nobody like a bitch in prison. I like that. Anyhow, right? So there's other inmates watching. What well, damn, what's the CEO going to do? Damn, I'm homie just fucking lost his mind and just went, psh, psh, right? The veteran cops are looking. All right. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You just asked this guy to remove his hat. He told you to fuck off. Right? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Your ass is going to get pulled out of the chow hall line. Right? The doors are going to get locked so that it can isolate you. Now, reality has set in. Like, oh, man, this dude called my bluff. Like, this, this dude isn't fucking around. Right? You're going to get put up on the wall. Right? You're going to spread your hands up. In situations like that, I used to like them interlace their hands, their fingers behind their head, right? Because now you have, now you have done something to agitate me, right? When it didn't have to go there. It wasn't that serious. Then you're going to, they're going to wrench on your little fingers, right? And then they're going to start giving you a closed body search. I, I can only imagine nobody likes you get patted down by another man. It's not cool, right? They even teach you at the academy to sweep the nuts area like that. It's actually a good place to hide weapons. There's a reason behind everything. Now you're really having a bad day, man. You got something in your butt that you ain't supposed to be having. You just went to mandatory yard. You got noticed that your girl is hooking up with the neighbor you try to flex on this CEO that looked new as hell. And, well, he had to do what he had to do. If that's the type of demeanor that he has. And, right, if he gets that concept. That is just the top layer of the cake, man. That is... Uh, That is just what you will encounter and not even all of it. We're talking about you're going to do unclosed body searches, meaning get fully naked, right? Run your fingers through your hair, open up your mouth, lift up your tongues. Uh, let me see your hands, flip them over, raise your arms, lift up your sack, turn around, squat, cough three times. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right? Uh Lift up the bottom of your feet. That can't be cool at all. It's not cool on the green side. and It's not cool on the blue side. It's just, 
It's prison, man. It's not cool. So, as you can see, you have to stay in some fo- type of line, right? Some type of uh, structure, right? Let's say you didn't learn your lesson from the DUI that got you in there and you killed somebody through manslaughter, right? And there's a new fresh batch of Pruno on the tier, right? Wine, inmate manufactured alcohol. You get your little brown tumbler, right? You, your mug, you, you, get, you, get, you get a little uh, tipsy now. <laughs> you get tipsy and nobody broke down the rules to you, so you're out there on the day room. And you see that one damn cop from your housing unit that asked you for your ID that kind of, you feel, punked you out in front of the the chow hall. So you're looking at him and you're like drunk. What's up now, bitch? Yeah, you ain't nothing but a, you ain't all that in a bag of chips. What's up? You don't know me. You don't know me, right? Now you are making a complete ass jackass out of yourself, right? In front of staff and in front of inmates. <laughs> Again, you have put yourself in a position you do not want to be in, right? Your people, your peers, the inmates are not going to like that because you have just brought attention to the whole entire house, right? If you have a sergeant like me, a lieutenant like me, which there are, right? We, I wasn't tripping that you were in the pad drinking. I started tripping when you started tripping on the cop. See how everybody, see how tripping can lead to problems? Ain't nobody like tripping, right? You guys are catching along here like, damn, Hector. Damn, you be telling it how it is, right? You will have to, if everything goes smoothly, right? You will have to answer to your own people. For, for having a pruno sweep of your building conducted. Now people's cell phones are going to get got. People's contraband stuff they're not supposed to have is going to get got because you caused, you caused that, right? <sighs> Let's say your liquid courage took you too far, man. Let's say your liquid courage took you too far. You, <laughs> you put hands on the cop. What? <laughs> okay. You put hands on the cop, right? Now, the cop is getting his ass handed to him, right? He's laid out, right? The partner is in shock. Then you have the big yard cops that come in, respond. They hit. Somebody has a common decency to hit their alarm, right? Now you have a staff assault. The troops come running in. They, wa- they run in. They see your drunk ass on top of that in- officer beating his ass. It is not going to end well for you. It is 100% not going to end well for you. (laughs) They are going to smash you. They are going to smash you in accordance with policy and procedure, right? (laughs) Overcome resistance, affect custody, subdue an attacker, and gain compliance with a lawful order, right? You start spitting on people, right? You're drunk, you're blood. Now they done beat your ass. You're bleeding, right? We got spit masks for that. You guys can't see this, but it's a spit mask. It says the hood because it happens, right? Now you're looking over there like Hannibal Lecter because you couldn't control your goddamn self. You never, you didn't pay attention to this video, right? You didn't pay attention to this damn video. You got got, right? Or maybe you thought you were bigger than something you weren't. <laughs> now you're going to ad seg the hole, right? You're going to go battered, tattered, bloody, right? After you go get your little medical attention. As a result of everything that just transpired. (laughs) Right? You see how things can like snowball out of control? And this is just one scenario. That may or may not happen, right? Now the officers see that you're in there for a staff assault, man. They actually like that little youngster, even though he's a bitch, right? (laughs) The new CO. They like them, right? Because he would always bring the best, like, ceviche from home, right? Best chile de rellenos that his old lady would make. Just dude was very giving, right? So they, 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 they could respect that dude, right? Dude was bringing little puppies to the sergeant and transportation, stuff like that. They, the kid was well-liked amongst his peers. They're like, oh, man, this is the dude that got so-and-so. 
God's nothing coming. God's nothing coming. The rule says you're supposed to have things coming, but it may happen where, hey, I know in the past, for sure, they'll forget to feed you, right? Or you may attempt to take a tray and you didn't want to eat that day. So now you're not eating, man. Now you're pissed off. Sometimes, especially Donovan, this was weird. Uh, there may not be a mattress for you. It may be a cold steel bunk, right? So now just imagine what the hell you have gotten yourself into because you wanted to do your own thing. You wanted to wild out, right? <laughs> Prison is not a place to wild out unless, unless, unless it is blessed, right? Unless it is blessed, right? Sanction. Then you can wild out all you want, but there's going to be re repercussions. Understand that. <laughs> Holy shit. I didn't even get to the point. I'm going to end it with this one. Oh, fuck. Here's another scenario, right? You're on the yard, right? You are feeling yourself, man. You got a teardrop tattoo by the homie in the cell. You got two weeks in doing your time, right? You are on fire, my boy. But nobody told you this rule, right? You're sitting there. <laughs> All of a sudden, you see your race engage in another m massive riot with another race, a different race other than yours, right? It's like the movie 300. You have 150 dudes on this side, 150, they're colliding in the middle, right? <laughs> You're right there sitting on top of the table eating your ice cream like, damn, ooh, oh, man, pow, boom. Pam, while well, like, oh man, you're just watching, right? <laughs> Observing. <laughs> the, the officer in the tower yelling, get down, get down. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get down, right? You never got involved. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you never got involved. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Yo, oh, shit. You got it. Oh, man, it's a massacre. You're just, wow. You're like, oh, this is crazy. Oh, it's about to be crazy. Let me tell you. <laughs> when, when the dust settles, right? Poof. <laughs> and they find out. Your people, right? Find out that you do not did not get involved in that. <laughs> that you did not participate in that. You're going to get stabbed. Plain and simple, you're going to get stabbed. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. I was laughing because could you imagine somebody just sitting back on the sidelines watching something that they should actually be participating in per their rules, right? Per the inmate rules. So as you can see, what a what a drastic, chaotic situation, man. I there's no way there's no I'm, there's no way that oh there, 28 minutes. There's no way I can tell you how to survive prison in 28 minutes, right? I gave you. Uh, the cherry on top. There's so much more. I might have to make another video on this. Keep pushing forward.